Where is my Uber? That cannot be my Uber. It says it's a Toyota. No Toyota sounds like that. Mate, is that a V12? Sure is. <laughs> Japanese V12? <laughs> Get out, I'm driving. This video was made possible thanks to Vans West. They are the ones that provided me with the Toyota Sentry. And if you're interested in JDM cars, please do yourself a favor and check out the Vans West website to see the incredible all imported inventory that they have in Australia. If you're interested in importing a car from Japan or interested in buying a car that's already been imported from Japan, please check out Vans West. just stolen is the only production car out of Japan with a fully Japanese built V12 engine. It has been the flagship model from Toyota and honestly maybe out of all of Japan for the past 55 years. Known as the pinnacle of Japanese luxury automobiles, the Rolls Royce of Japan and its real name the Toyota Sentry. Now, you may have heard me say the phrase Japanese built V12 and the little member in your pants suddenly got substantially less little. But before my words make you prematurely ejaculate, let me throw some more on top. Because these cars can be found in Australia for under $20,000 a Japanese V12 luxury sedan for 20 grand. It's ridiculous. And I think it's just because they're not very well known. And they're fucking enormous. <laughs> so I think I've probably hooked you. You probably want to know more. So let's jump into it. And let me tell you a little more about what the Toyota Sentry is and why it's back in a V12. There's a crackhead out my window. Really struggling to walk. Now, let's explain why this car exists and why it's been successful enough to exist for the past 55 years. Imagine you are a successful politician or business person in Japan. You want a car that is nice and comfortable and luxurious. But more importantly, you want a car that's that in the back seat. Because commute time is a lot more valuable to be used for work than for enjoying a nice drive. So you need a chauffeur driven car and Amongst those options, you've got Rolls-Royce Phantoms, you've got Bentley Mulsans, hell, you've even got Maybachs. There's plenty of options, but there's one thing about all of those cars that makes them a problem for these people. And that is, they're not made in Japan. Now, that doesn't sound like a huge issue. I, I, for most people, I'm sure it wouldn't be. But Japan has such a thriving car production business that for a successful and prominent figure in Japan, it might be seen as a statement for them not to be driving a Japanese car. Thus, the Toyota Sentry was born. The Toyota Sentry was created to rival those cars like Rolls Royces and Bentleys. 
to allow successful politicians and business people to ride around in luxury while still supporting the Japanese automotive market. And honestly, they've clearly done very well. The problem with cars designed for people with chauffeurs is the wanky businessmen that buy them. They're always too busy sitting in the back on the phone buying a private island or getting sucked off by a hooker while snorting coke. But what they're not doing is appreciating their expensive car's engine. This is why with cars like this and Rolls Royces, they're focused on a quiet and smooth cabin experience, which means the V12 up front has to sit at the front of class and tinker away in its schoolwork in silence. It's sad, really. For us car enthusiasts, however, we want the V12 to be vocal. In fact, we want the V12 to join the choir and sing its fucking heart out. This is why the lovely people over at Vans West fitted this V12 with an exhaust to allow this abused child to finally have the confidence to open up. And open up it did. Okay, yeah, it sounds fucking insane. It, it actually, it sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a supercar. <laughs> the engine, though being a V12, is by no means a performance engine. I believe the idea with the V12 is that a car capable of a lot of power is going to be very smooth and unstressed when being used with low power. And it makes sense. With a chauffeur driven car, you don't need it to be quick. It needs to be smooth and quiet for the passenger in the back to, I don't know, sign his divorce papers or whatever the fuck he's doing. And for that, it works. So stock the car makes about 280 horsepower, letting this five meter long, two ton car get up to a top speed of about 210 kilometers per hour or 130 miles an hour if you're using Imperial. So those dimensions, you know, if you are struggling to gauge it, are about one great white shark in weight, about three llamas in length, or if you're boring, it's about as long as a Dodge Challenger and weighs about as much as a Toyota RAV4. But just because the stock engine isn't much to write home about doesn't mean there isn't potential for it. As far as modding goes, you may have heard of the legendary Smokey Nagata. How about the iconic, top secret V12 Toyota Supra made by Mr. Smokey Nagata. I'm sure you've heard of it. Well, where do you think he got that V12 from? That's right. It's a Toyota Century engine. But Smokey Nagata is not the only one that's got insane power out of this engine. There's someone in New Zealand who made an S14 drift car with twin turbos and one of these engines to get over a thousand horsepower. I've also seen some people in Japan that have manual swapped them, which sounds like it would be a hell of a lot of fun. Although I do think that this car really makes sense with an auto. It's a cruiser, it's floaty, it's nice, it's smooth. And I feel like if you aren't gonna modify the engine or do much to it at least, you may as well keep it automatic and just keep it as a late night cruiser. As far as visual mods go, as I'm sure you would assume, all executive cars like this are just extremely popular in the VIP or Bipu scene. I'm not sure if I said Bipu right, I've never actually heard of it. Uh, Google just told me that VIP is also called Bipu. <laughs> uh, but uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that. So for the VIP stance, you're getting low, wide stance, big wheels, a fresh cone of paint, maybe a body kit, tinted windows, essentially just making a car look even more like a mob boss car. And they look sick. Now, the car that I'm driving right now is the second generation Century. It's the only one with the V12. And I know you might be thinking, oh fuck, only one generation has the V12? But don't worry. This generation was on sale for 20 years. So as you can imagine, there's plenty of V12s to go around. 9,500 to be exact, 
So you can still get your hands on one of these for as cheap as I said at the beginning. Now, this generation started production in 1997, but as a luxury sedan, it has features that some modern luxury sedans still don't have. It's kind of crazy how technologically advanced this car is from being a 1997. So I guess it's time to look inside and show you the real reason why people bought these cars. The back seat and the technology. There's so many features in the back of this car, I don't know where to start. I, I would genuinely argue that this car has a lot of features that luxury cars from today still don't have, and this car's from the 90s. Let's start with something that I just noticed before that's pretty fucking crazy. To me, it's crazy to me, I don't know, maybe it's not crazy, but... It has mirrors in the back so I can look at myself. That's, that's, that's sick, and there's one on both sides, as you would expect. Here, you have this big center console that you can put up and have room, you know, for your legs or whatever. But if you pull the center console down, it looks pretty tame. It looks pretty plain, honestly. Lift this lever up and it reveals... Yeah, we actually have two cup holders. We have a spot for, this is fucking crazy, a recorder. This is where you put your recorder. It straps in there. And that is because there is this little button here that when you press it, it will engage a microphone that allows you to record voice memos because you're a very important Japanese politician and you need to, you know, record something abusive for your assistant. Uh, but you can also control the radio from back here and then you lift this little hidden gem up and it reveals all the seat controls. This car has electric seats in the back. 1997, let me remind you. And it doesn't just have simple controls. You have headrest up and down. Let me, let me show you. So you have headrest, up and down. You have headrest, tilt. Look at that. Ridiculous, so nice. You have seat forward and back in the back seat. And look, as you go further forward, it reclines more. Very nice. Uh, you can also lift up the bottom. You probably can't see that very well, but the bottom of the seat is moving up and down. Very, very, very nice. A little squeaky. It does have beautiful leather seats. Uh, this one pushes the back lumbar support up. You can't really see it, but it's like inflating the back of the seat. You also have like sets so you can have your, uh, your settings. Um, and the same can be done on my seat. But what is really cool is these buttons here allow me to move the seat in front of me. So I can make the seat in front of me less reclined, more reclined, whatever. So if I'm sitting in the back of the seat, at the back of this car, and I'm annoyed that there's not much room, I can stretch out my legs. This feature is probably the coolest feature on this car. And you may be thinking, how can a seat be the coolest feature in a car? But picture this, you just got off a flight. You're a successful businessman. You just got off like a 24 hour flight. You feel horrible. You've been seated for 24 hours, only to be picked up by your driver and have to sit again. It's not very pleasant. Well, to make it nicer for you, to stretch your legs out, you can pull this lever and open up the middle of the seat in front of you. So you may fully recline on your seat. And we can do this and then move my seat forward a bit, tilt this down. And look, I am very relaxed back here. This is extremely comfortable. This car is a road trip machine. For $20,000, you can get this car and road trip across the city, I mean, across the states, but your one problem, everybody's gonna be fighting over this fucking seat. And also you do lose a seat when you do this, obviously. It's not completely ideal. But let's keep looking at some of the other features of this car. Oh, put this back up, put this away. We've gone through all these incredible features. Directly in front of that center console, you have the other center console where you have two air vents, very nice. You also have an air vent up here and an air vent over there, so you have lots of air. I don't know if these are uh, air vents or speakers or whatever the fuck they are, but there's something. But we reveal this beautiful crested chicken thing, and it reveals our beautiful 1997 TV and remote. Very nice, push it down and it slowly rises very elegantly uh, to allow us to control the, the TV from back here. Very nice. 
who doesn't like a who doesn't like a TV in their car? You've also got a spot that's, you know, perfect for your phone, which I'm sure they are thinking of the future there. Put that down. Under here, you have a nice little spot for your brick of cocaine, you know, or whatever else, maybe your, your firearm. And then just above it, you have a nice tray that you can take out and you can make your lines on there and then snort them off. So they really know their clientele, which is very nice. Come on. I don't know if this was meant to come out. I think it just came out. There we go. <laughs> we have seat heaters in the rear. So you can, you can heat the rear seats and the front seats. You also have a massage seat, which I'm gonna be honest, it's just essentially a vibrator for your body. But that's, you know, okay. It's better than nothing. You got extra speakers, put the windows down. It's great. Very, very, very nice. You also, on every single uh, seat, have a cigarette lighter or a cigar lighter and an ashtray. Makes sense. I also really, really like the door handles. It's just these little grab handles that you pull up. Very nice. To be honest, that's probably everything. In the oh no, one feature that I did miss. You can't see it because the car's not on. But these lights, oh you can. These lights, which there's two of, you know, just in case you need double lighting, have a dimmer. So you can brighten or dim the lights to your heart's content. Very, I don't know what this does. Oh, it's a little hook for your suit. Very nice. I'm learning things with you. <laughs> But yeah, that is the incredible backseat of the Toyota Century from 1997. So, I've spent a little bit of time with the car now. Not as much time as I would like to. Uh, I, I honestly, you know, I'm about to say whether or not I would buy this, but spoiler alert, I would. This car seems like a bargain for the price. And I would very happily own this car. The seats are comfy, it drives super easily, it's got great visibility, it sounds great, it looks great. It feels great. I, I, I want it. <laughs> and, you know, I just got to convince Elise. We'll throw Elise in the back seat, show her all the fantastic features, and then we can put a baby seat in the back and we'll be good. <laughs> the people at the dealership told me that it's actually really, uh, it's pretty economical too. You would expect the V12 to blast through fuel, but if, apparently it's not that bad. But that's the people at the dealership telling me, so they might be jaded. <laughs> uh, I've also read that, you know, these cars being Toyotas have very reliable engines, which is surprising out of a V12 because, you know, I'm used to hearing about V12s and things like Jaguars and they aren't, you know, known for being reliable. Uh, <laughs> but this thing, apparently it's actually reliable. I've heard it's basically two 1J or 2JZs put together, made into a V12. Uh, which I'm sure will give people the biggest erections of all time. Um, if you want a big old luxury sedan with comfy seats, quirky features, and a fucking V12, well, you don't have many other options. Um, and honestly, this car is kind of in a line, lane of its own. When you, when you consider the price and what you get for that price, I really don't think you can compare it to much. Normally, at the end of a video like this, I would be comparing it to cars that are similar but I just couldn't think of any. I found some old BMW 7 Series and things like that, but they just didn't compare to me. I don't think I would have any other car in this segment because I wouldn't want anything more than this. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Peace. <laughs> the parking brake's on. Um.